Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well and uh, here we are at the goods yard where we left off from last week and I've had some more good response yet again a um, couple of comments um, will, I be will I be weathering the gates Yes, I probably will do at some point because they do look squeaky clean. I think the whole goods yard looks squeaky clean actually. Looks like it's been, yeah, polished. <laughs> right, so is there any more work left to do in the goods yard? There, there is, there's little bits. Um, I want to add a set of coal stays. Uh, maybe small figures and uh, maybe the odd truck but um, apart from that that's more or less done I think so where do we go from here let's just turn the camera around and we'll have a look around the other side and as you can see the station has been lifted off yet again I tell you what, I'm glad I haven't started the oval roof just yet because it would have been a nightmare lifting everything on and off, on and off. But um, here's where we are. We had started the paving here at this end of the road last week. And uh, since then I've had a couple of hours up here and I managed to get done all this paving all the way through to the end here where the substation is um, I've created a little bit of a car park there and uh, the only thing left to do here is to add some lamp posts which hopefully I'll get done in this video um, along with finishing off this little bit of paving here so the sweet shop can be installed I'm not too concerned about doing the capping stones on these walls yet I can leave that for another time but um, the main priority is to get station road finished at least this half if I turn around the camera this side as you can see it's still a building side so the things left to do, um, as I mentioned the lamp posts, I want to create a um, some sort of turnaround circle here. Uh, I want to create a bush shelter for here as well. So that's got to be done and then obviously that will be finished. Um, the road will need another coat of paint um, because I've got glue marks on it and all and scuffs and what have you. So if I get that done, get the lamp posts in, then I can get the station back onto the baseboard. And uh, it does look weird, all these people are here and <laughs> the station has vanished. <laughs> So you're probably wondering about this uh, little tiny cotton mat. Um, it measures uh, 145 by 130 millimeters. All I've done there is I've just cut up an old um, cutting mat and created a small one. It's, it's ideal for chopping up slabs and you just want that little um, mat rather than trying to drag a whole big mat up here. Now there are a pain cut. Um, I've had to score it quite a few times with a really sharp Stanley blade and then snap it and once you break the, the inner middle you can run the Stanley blade through again and it'll just cut. It's, it's the core of this um, pad that makes it really heavy duty and hard wearing. And um, so it is worth keeping your old cutting mats. 
Right, so I just want to show you a couple of um, paving setups here. Um, this paving I've got here, I'm putting down here, is roughly 22 millimeters, including the curb. And here are two other examples of setting up pavement um, with the slabs that you get from Medcalf. You've got this path set up here. This is 20 millimeters which gives you a 4 foot slab and a 2 by 3 foot slab and if you want to go with that a little bit wider here is a 26 millimeters or almost 27 millimeters and you get the 2 uh, 4 foot by 3 foot and 2 um, 2 foot by 3 foot and a 4 foot slab in the middle so you there's different patterns and arrangements you can uh, make up for your paving. Um, with me, I've got to be awkward. I've got to have a 22mm one, um, which means I've got to cut down one of these for every two I lay, if that makes sense. I just thought I'd show you that as a, as a rough guide on how to lay or what configuration you can use for um, laying your slabs. Now we're back at the bench and as you can see I have marked out what looks to be two giant D's, one that way and one that way. And the idea is with these is I'm going to turn them into traffic islands. We've all seen them, they're in the middle of the road and we use them for crossing points. So what I've done here is I've measured them 25mm across. 30 millimeters deep to that line there and I'm using a 8 mil penny washer um, outside diameter is 25 mil so inside is 8 outside so I'm using that just to draw around the circumferences there so what I'll do now is we'll cut these out and then uh, let's see how I'm going to do this So the card I'm using is 0.5 thick, it's just thin card and uh, as you can see I'm just finishing off the last of the circles here. Right so we have our 2Ds, now then, the next thing we need to do is to get our trusty Medcalf paving, try and use this radius here to form round the Ds. So I'm just going to have a little play, see if it works. So we've cut out our radiuses from the Medcalf pack. And basically I'm just going to put this penny washer into the corner of the radius and see if I can form it round. If I can, then I think it's going to work and it looks like it is. So the first thing I want to do is put some super glue around the edge of the D. Because we want to be able to form it and um, and I think we'll have trouble if we don't have the super glue at hand to help. So as you can see I've already pre-formed the radius using the penny washer. So what we'll do, we'll glue the straight on first. You've got to do it a little bit at a time. Just leave that for a little while before we uh, start putting the form in the radius. Just let that take. And then as we go round, we just gently press it on. And we should end up with a nice day like so. We'll see as it were. Right, so it does work. So what we'll do is we'll put a little bit more super glue on this straight and we'll just trim the ends.
obviously try not to touch the super glue yourself. So once you've finished um, doing the curb edges, I'm just going to go round now with a blade and just cut off any excess card. Um, just trimming it round and tidying it up. Right, so the next part is to just put in a piece of curb in between the two C's to make the D's. You can use super glue again, or you could try and rely on the stickiness of the curb. But uh, I'm going to use a little bit of super glue just to be sure. And now it's just a case of filling in the inside with your paving slabs. So the hardest part I find is putting a little tiny piece in that corner. I mean what I should have done was trimmed one of these down and then have a bigger radius at the top. But never mind, we learn. So it's just a case of cutting this little tiny piece out. Hopefully it'll fit. Perfect. So the next thing I want to do is paint these edges um, black and white. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is, using the back of the scalpel, put a little impression in. Probably every 6mm. Just to create a curb and you know what curbs to paint black. And what curbs to paint white. So you can roughly get three down that side. So if we do the same here, so we've got some sort of pattern. Just press it nice and hard so you've got a little indent there. And there. And one there. Right, so then we can find the middle, which is about there. Press it there. And then one in between. And another one in between that one. So we've got a little impression for the curbs. And then you should end up with something like this. Um, an island platform to go in the middle of your roads. Um, the next thing I want to add to this is a keep left bollard. And what I've done here is I've glued two pieces of 4mm by 2mm thickness card together and wrap them around with a piece of paper. And that's quite sturdy now, that's hardened off overnight. So what I'll do is I'll cut these up into little barlards and um, we'll see where we go from there. I have cut this long length into two and I've marked it down 12mm from the top 
and I'm keeping this length for now um, just so I can handle them right so the next thing I want to do is to glue a piece of card around the base of this um, bollard if you like and then what I'll do is I'll put a cap on it as you can see I've already glued the 2mm by 1mm card around the base of this bollard so the next thing I want to do is just add some super glue to some 1mm card which I've pre-cut well, this is a little bit finer this is less than half a mil thick and then what we'll do then we'll just stick this on my 5mm mark uh, as you can see there I've marked that from the top 5mm and if we place this all the way around the bollard hopefully it will stick then we should follow it around Try not to get it stuck to your fingers. And once it's cut, once it's stuck, just cut the excess off once it's stuck to the uh, bollard. And then the last thing to do is to make sure that the top is nice and flat in both planes, so it's nice and square. If there is a little bit there, just cut it square. Right, and the last and final piece is to dip it into your super glue. And you see, I've got a little piece of card there. It's 5.5 by 5.5 square. Now, it's important that you get this smack in the middle. so and then just before it dries just bend the corners over and then you'll end up with this 1950s traffic ballad so the next thing to do is to paint this up. I have now just painted them matte white uh, as a base coat. And then when that dries, we'll uh, add the black and then paint the top white gloss. But uh, you can see how it's going to look when it's finished. So what I'm doing now is I'm just painting on the black stripe around the middle and the black base now I've been doing a bit of research into these keep left bollards and uh, they were introduced into um, onto the roads in the early 1900s because there were so many deaths with people just driving where they want to drive and then these things came about and uh, hence why we drive on the left hand side of the road so this is just uh, finishing these off and uh, what I'll do next to finish these off is I've got a very very fine permanent marker and I'll just put an arrow in there pointing the left um, yeah these things come in various shapes and sizes some were just stones with the word keep left on like a milestone as it were really early ones 
um, some had a, a beacon on the top and then obviously the newer ones are lit but uh, it's just a thought Hopefully we'll end up with something like that. I'm going to keep the top white though. I'm not going to paint that black. So as you can see I've been a little bit busy. I've uh, repainted the road and I've done all the paving um, in this area. And I've put the station building back. So what I'm doing now is I'm just putting in these traffic calming measures to make sure we keep the people on the right side of the road so I'm going to set that just about there 120 from this edge and we'll set it at 15 mil gap I'm just using a little bit of PVA to glue them down Notice I'm using the rule to keep these parallel to each other. Right, just let them dry. So as you can see it's quite a sunny day here at uh, South Shields Railway Station. So all the paving's done, like I said, uh, we've even done the little car parking area here, that's been repainted. Uh, we have the fish and chip van here, um, before we get down to the 39 steps. And all this is done. Um, Pre-drilled some holes ready for some lamp posts to go in. There's, there's a hole there as well. And it's all starting to take shape. And if we move further down the road, I have done all of Station Road. As you can see, the street plan has been done along with a tiny back scene there which shows the road going round the building there up to the bridge so what we'll do, we'll finish off this little area here so what's missing on this little scene here is we've got the pavement running up the hill so I just want to paint in this little bit of road here, we just want to paint that in and make it look like a fence. So I'm using a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm using um, acrylic paints to do this. I just want to hide what appears to be that road. Anyway, it's something like that. Now 
And then to finish we'll just start a few trees. Right, that will do nicely. As you can see, I've been doing a little bit of uh, research into bush shelters. Uh, this one was taken, well, this photograph was taken in the 1950s. And um, as you can see, it's one of these old type uh, bush shelters where you've got the entrance in the back there. So it's an S shape. So there's no queue jumping. And I think that's why it was designed in like that, to stop people jumping the queues. So what we're going to do now is concentrate on making a couple of bush shelters. So I'm going to make one like this with the S bend in, so you come in and go and wait for the bus. And I'm going to make an open front one like this, so I'm making two bus stops. Um, found this in my common handy box and this is what I'm going to use for the lower panels so always pays to keep your little bits and pieces so as you can see in front of us we have two kits made up here um, these three piles here are for the open front uh, bush shelter and these pieces here are for the offset entrances uh, bush shelter um, to get the sizes here we've got 27 millimeter I borrowed a uh, teacher off of the platform and I hope he doesn't mind me measuring him up and the height of this teacher is 23 millimeters uh, and 50 so we've just gone four millimeters above his head so he's got plenty of head clearance and for the width of the opening there I've gone to the edge of his arm here and then added three millimeters so he's got plenty of clearance so it's roughly 14 millimeters we've got there and as for the depth of the bush shelter I've taken it off of this bush shelter this is a knight's wing hard metal kit and that's roughly about 20 millimeters so I'm making that depth more or less the same um, for both sets of bush shelters so now we have our components here in front of us. This is what I'm basically using. I'm using 1.5 styrene strips for the main posts. And for any intermediate uh, um, framing, I'm using one mil. So basically what I'll do is I'll put all these together first. And then we'll start doing the intermediate framework. The panels now, I've glued the, the, the one mil strips to the panels and they do look like panels now so the next thing is to glue the uprights to the panels and have a offset gap so it's off the floor as you can see they have stuck in a little bit of 1.5 square styrene strip in there just so I can get it off of the floor by a small gap so what I'll do now is glue that one onto there before I do that, that needs squaring up a little bit. So we'll just take a little bit more of that one. Now. 
And we'll just bring that rule in there and then we've got a nice square upright. So he says. We can always manipulate that once it's on. Twist that around a little bit more. Push in there. up right now and we should end up with something like that once your uprights have been glued to your panel the next thing is to put a top rail in so I'm starting with the open front bus shelter to start with and uh, you measure the distance in the gap there it's um, roughly 13 mil I've worked it out at. and then you just drop these in space them off probably put four in here and then just the one in there after I've got the crossbar in once you've got your top rails in and your window panels in then it's time to glue them all together these have been dry for quite a while now so it's just a case of um, gluing them together do is to make sure I've got them all the same height. Use that little bit of 0.5 strip there to keep the gap. Make sure that all three legs are touching the mat. Right, we shall leave that to dry. Uh, as you can see I'm just adding the roof to this bush shelter uh, just sticking it down um, the roof is made out of 2 mil plastic sheet um, the evergreen plastic sheet and, uh, it's the roof which gives this shelter its strength just making sure that all the all the sides and the back is flush and here we have the bush shelter and what I've done is I've chamfered this edge on the underside just by scraping it with the blade and um, on the top I've just added some 0 0.2 by 75 strip and I'll just paint that grey and uh, here we have a bush shelter so I'm almost finished with the other bush shelter um, just thought I'd show you this little trick for gluing in windows Obviously you measure the gap, you get it to the distance you want, which is in this case is 13.5. Get it roughly where you want it, push down on the mat, and then as soon as you think you've got it where it wants to be, just move it. And that's it, job done. We'll just let that dry, and then we can put this shelter together. Um, this shelter because it's one of those S types I've got a measure for the 14 mil gap at the front here plus a post and then the roof this is for the roof so we measure our shelter should be 34 34 millimeters plus the 14 34 that makes 44 plus 2 mil either side overhang 44 is 46 plus the post again so it's more or less the same as this one and here we have our two shelters uh, you can see by this design um, you go in one end through here and then 
obviously when the bus pulls up you come out this end as you saw in the photograph and they're almost the same length which is, which is good they're definitely the same width because of the three panels on the ends there so these are ready for painting now as you can see I have uh, almost finished with these bush shelters so what I'm doing now is given these yellow panels another coat of paint because the blue is bleeding through the yellow so a second coat just about hopefully will hide it and uh, they're not a bad colour really so the last little job now to finish off station road is to add some lamp posts and uh, I'm in the process now of um, just about doing that so what I'm doing is I'm tinning the cables just dipping them in the flux and then just putting some solder on this just helps to um, adhere the wire to the new wires uh, on the lamp post and here's one of them lamp posts now I've got you notice I've got the resistor in the jaws there that's just keeping it nice and steady while I add the live cable which is red so I'll just dip that back in the flux now a little tiny bit of solder and then we can um, solder this one on the thing is to get a nice flow of solder on there and make sure there's no ripples in it you know you've got a nice nice joint so the next thing to do with that is to add a little bit of heat shrink to cover the joint up and what we do there we use the back of the soldering iron to um, shrink the heat shrink onto the onto the resistor and joint just to add protection so we're just using the back of the soldering iron now now these cables are so delicate quite easily snap hence why I'm holding the lamp post in the jaws as well so it's not moving around while I do this little job so uh, that's done we do the negative one now the negative cable is very very fine as well and the easiest way to get back to the bare cable is to not press down too hard but firmly enough just to flatten it and when you turn it around hopefully you've already done enough on the other side to pair it off like so and you just dip that in your flux and you can tin that one ready do with this as I hold that in the jaws of my little handy helper hand here make sure that's nice and straight and then the blue cable I'll dip that back in the flux and we just solder that on And we heat shrink that one as well and job done now these lamp posts you can get I think you get uh, I think you get 10 in a pack for about a tenner 
and they come with the resistors already on them. Once this is done, we can put it on the layout. Yet again, using the back end of the soldering iron to shrink the cable. So once you've got your heat shrink on, there's only one test left to do, and that's just to see if it's working. Yep, we have light. Since the widening of the baseboard, a terminus station now has a new, totally new look. Uh, you can imagine the terraced houses being on that street there and the little road there will go round into the back lane and uh, the vision is slowly but surely appearing. So let's have a look at Station Road from the other side. So we'll start at the top end of the road. Um, and there's one of the bush shelters. And we actually have a sign there saying Station Road. It's just recently been stuck in. So as we head further down the road you can see the bus stop and the newly installed lamp posts. They're not lit yet because um, I haven't run a supply to the lamp posts, so I'm keeping the supply to the lamp posts separate. And there's the other bus shelter. And here we have. This is T's sweet shop, all lit up. And all the way down there, you can see all the lampposts all the way down past the chip van, all the way down to the substation. And uh, as you can see, I've added a, a bus stop and uh, I've made the actual um, post from 1mm um, styrene strip. And uh, the actual sign I got down off the internet and uh, got it down as small as I can. And I had a comment of a uh, recent photograph I put up uh, on YouTube. And uh, I think the guy is right. It is the wrong bus stop sign. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut off the green bits underneath the green boxes if you like. So it just ends up with the bus stop and the bus on there. And I think um, that would uh, be sufficient I think. But yeah. Yeah so that was easy enough. Uh, it's, it's quite flexible so I did was just bend it over. Got my little cutting mat up here, lay the cutting mat down and then just cut that off. And uh, yeah, quite happy with that. I think I'll take a new picture. Next week we shall concentrate on the canopy which goes on the front here. And uh, once that's done It'll be time for the big oval roof, which I really can't wait to get stuck into. It's going to take me months to do that. So, until then, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. It's been a very productive week this week. Got lots done in Station Road. It's now complete. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.
stay safe and that's goodbye from me bye